you keep sins in your heart, the Lord will not hear you. And that is very clear in the Bible. Turn it around, open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing, overflow. Turn it around, open the windows of heaven, and pour out a blessing, we cannot contain yeah. it. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, uh, let's just open our Bible <laughs> to the book that... Uh, is in the Old Testament. I know every one of you are familiar with this book. Uh, it's called Hosea. Uh, Hosea in, uh, uh, in Hebrew. Hosea 10 verse 12. Hosea 10 verse 12. It says, Sow righteousness for yourself. Reap the fruit of unfailing love. And break up your unplowed ground for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers his righteousness on you amen let's just pray father in the name of Jesus we come before you this morning Holy Spirit speak to us reveal your word to us this morning I pray for those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit of God is telling to the church. We give you praise, God. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, in this place. In Jesus' name, everybody say, Amen and Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, it is time to seek the Lord. Look, it's okay. Look at your neighbor. It is time to seek the Lord. I think uh, more than ever... We need to seek the Lord. Why? Because we are living in a broken generation. Remember the song we sang? We are living in a broken generation. Why I'm saying that? Because all around us, we see crimes. We see uh, people are committing suicide. Uh, even in a rich country like Canada and U.S., they are trying to remove uh, God from the school. They don't want to do anything with God and uh, Christianity anymore. So we, we are literally living in a broken generation. And more than ever, we need to seek God. Amen? We really need to, to seek God. Corruptions, crime all around us. Government are fighting. You know, people are, the, you've, you've heard about the news of refugees are coming from Syria and uh, Iraq and going to, to Europe, to Germany. You know, all, they're losing their lives and everything. You know, from your country, from this country, Philippines, a lot of things are going on. And God really wants us to seek Him with all our hearts, with all our minds. So it is time to seek the Lord. Amen? I came from a background that it was a religious background. Christianity was not allowed. We cannot find the Bible in our country because they are not allowing us to read the Bible because they knew if we, someone read the Bible, his mind will be open, he will know the truth, and that truth will set him free. So it was dangerous for the government to really uh, let the Bible be distributed in the, in the bookstore and to the homes and everyone. So the Bible is forbidden. So I grew up in that country. I grew up in a family that uh, we were taught to read the Quran. We were taught to be a good Muslim. We were taught to be doing good to people. But deep inside... We miss something, especially for myself, for me. Deep inside, I was always scared of death. I was always scared. There sh I was always thinking that there should be something more than that. There should be something more than my religion that is teaching me. It was a good country. I'm not really against the country itself and against the people. I'm, uh, I, I, was, I was actually against the system of that country. 
the, the religious system of that country that really not only taught me how to live, but teaching everybody how to live in accordance to the religion. And we have all learned that religion was not the one that man lost, right? Man never lost the religion. Man lost the kingdom of God. Man lost the Garden of Eden. And Jesus, 2,000 years ago, came to pay the penalty for our sins, for our disobedience. And whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life, the Bible says. And he will be the one to bring you back to, to your original place. And that original place, when you read the, the, the Bible, uh, actually the Bible, it's, uh, they, they're all saying the Bible is uh, two, uh, two parts. One is Old Testament and one is New Testament, right? But for me, the Bible is actually three parts. The Bible is chapter 1, 2, and 3 of Genesis. That's the foundation of the Bible. That's a chapter that there was no religion. There was perfect uh, relationship between man and God. And then chapter 3 to Malachi is one portion of the Bible. And then when Jesus came, Matthew to Revelation is another one. So the Bible, actually, you can call it in three sections. The first section is the foundational book. And I want to encourage all of us to read chapter 1, 2, and 3 of Genesis. Anytime you have, you know, you have opportunity, if you are in the washroom, it doesn't matter. If you are somewhere that you know, you're waiting for a doctor, just open that book. And um, we, we, are, we are very thankful for this generation that now you, we can access the Bible in our iPad, in our notepad, you know, in, uh, you know, in computer, everything. We can access it. So start reading that chapter verse by verse, digest it, and ask God to reveal it to you. Because if you understand these three chapters, then you will understand the program of God afterwards, the plan of God afterwards. And you will understand also Jesus Christ. We need to seek God. We need to seek God. The children of Israelites, uh, God has really chosen them uh, for a purpose, for, for his program to be fulfilled 2,000 years ago by Jesus coming to earth. So these children of Israelites, they all came from Jacob, and they, they've been a slave in, in Egypt for uh, 430 years. They have seen miracles all over again. God sent them Moses. Moses started to open the Red Sea. In fact, it was God who started to open the Red Sea. And then they, they, were, they came out of Egypt with gold and silver, all the, all the treasure of Egypt, all the wealth of Egypt. They came out, going back to their promised land. But in that 40 years, it took them 40 years to reach the promised land because they did not seek the Lord. Because they were obedient, disobedient to God. Even though they have seen miracles, even though they have seen, you know, a Red Sea being opened in front of them, you know, the water comes out of the rock, you know, uh, they did not lack anything even in the wilderness. But the Bible says, no one ever reached the promised land. Even Moses did not reach the promised land. The Bible says only people under 20 actually led by Joshua, and then they, they reached the promised land. Why? Because they were disobedient, and they did not seek the Lord. And God sent them a lot of prophets. And then the prophets telling them, it is time to seek the Lord. It is time to seek the Lord. But they did not listen. They did not listen. So all of them died in the wilderness, and they did not see the promised land. And it is not God's desire for us not to see the promised land. And we, you all have a promised land. What is your promised land? Graduate from college, right? Your promised land, you know, seeing your children uh, fulfilling their dreams and vision in life, that is your promised land. But it all depends on you to seek the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength. 
And then how do we really seek the Lord in this generation? I want to give you four steps of seeking the Lord. Four steps of seeking the Lord. Number one, be in right standing with God, soul righteousness. We read the we read Hosea 10, right? It says, seek soul righteousness for yourself, reap the fruit of unfailing love. It means we really have to come to close to God every day in our lives. If you come to Him, the Bible says He will also come to you. Jesus says, I am standing behind the door and knocking. And he will never get tired of knocking. He will always knock. But it all depends on us to open the door for him. Yes, you may grow up in a church. Maybe you were grew up in a Christian home. But if you do not open that door for Jesus on a daily basis to come to your life, to come to your heart, and then to sit down with you and you sit down with him, become close to him on a daily basis, those religious activity, those good things that you have done, it, it's, the Bible says it's a filthy rag before God. Paul, the apostle, was a theologian. And he, he, he read the Old New Testament, everything. And his perspective from New Testament is to kill the Christian. But after Saul became Paul, now from... New Testament and Old Testament now, there was no New Testament. There were, from Old Testament, now he's bringing Jesus alive. That teaching people that you have to believe in Jesus Christ. Before, he was persecuting Christian, and he was theologian. Theologian means he knew the Bible, Torah, everything. But when God transformed his life from Saul to Paul, Saint Paul, they call it, and now he, is, he, uh, he, he wrote half of the New Testament. And now we are quoting his, uh, his uh, uh, saying in the New Testament. And the Christian actually, uh, they, they really ha have uh, some honor and respect to, to Paul the Apostle. Because God really has chosen him. He was... On the way to going to Damascus to kill the Christian, he saw the light, and Jesus revealed himself to, to him. He became blind. He said, who, who, who are you? He said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. God changed his life. He seek the Lord. It is time for us to seek the Lord. It's time for us to seek the Lord. Be in right standing with God. So righteousness. Righteousness means right standing. Be with God. Close to God. Come close to God. There was a story in, 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 in the Old Testament. I think many of you have read it. Uh, from Genesis chapter 37 to chapter 50 is the story of Joseph. I don't have it on the screen. But it's, it's the story of Joseph. Joseph was one of the sons of Jacob. But he chose to be in right standing with God. And because of that, God made him prime minister in Egypt. Because he chose to be in right standing with the Lord. Even though there, there was no uh, law during that time, but the law was in his heart. He said, I know my father was seeking the Lord. I want to I wanna also follow what my father followed before. I want to seek the same God that my father followed. He seeked the Lord and God brought him from the pit. Because he was thrown in the pit. He was thrown in the prison. And then he became prime minister. The second in command the whole, uh, of the whole world. And God wants to do everything also. The things that he has done in the past, he wants to do for you as well. But again, it depends on us how we seek him. So number one, to really be in right standing with God. And it says, 
sow righteousness and you will reap the harvest. You will reap the unfailing love. The power of sowing and reaping. Whatever you sow, you will reap. If you, if you reap, if you sow right standing with God, if you sow your time, your energy to God, you will reap the harvest. You will reap the unfailing love according to the scripture. And that also is the same thing with, with our finances. If you really sow uh, our finances to the kingdom of God, we will definitely reap the harvest. But uh, it depends with, with us, where are we sowing? Are we sowing in the right ground or in, in the wrong ground? It is very important to sow the seed of righteousness so we can, uh, we can uh, uh, have unfailing love. Number two, confess your sin to God. The scripture says, break up your unplowed ground. And it, it, it is saying that you really need to dig your heart. Whatever is in your heart, bring it up. You know, unplowed ground means your heart. You need to dig it. Dig your heart and then uh, bring it up and then confess your sin to God. It is talking about really yourself, your, your, your old uh, self, your past. Psalms 32 verse 5. It says, I acknowledge my sin to you. I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgression to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. So we really need to confess our sin to God. Because David, David did this confession, he became, the Bible says he became the apple of God's eyes. He was a sinful man on all earth during that time. He had many wives, many concubines. He messed up with his life. But at one point, he came to, to realize, he came to his senses. He said, I have to come seek the Lord. But, but he did not come to seek the Lord. He said, first, let me confess my sin first. So when you read the book of Psalms, you will see a lot of confession of David. In, in the book of Psalms, when you read it, he's talking, he's talking about him, himself, that he was, he was good for nothing. He, conf, he confessed all his sins to God. And because of that, you know, he cried literally to God. Because of that, God really restored his life back. Now we are enjoying the book of Psalms because one man decided to seek the Lord in his heart. You cannot seek the Lord with sins in your heart. If there is sin in our heart, we cannot seek the Lord. In fact, the Lord says uh, in, 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 in Psalm 66, verse 18, He says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, it means if I regard sin, if I keep sin in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. It doesn't matter how much time you pray. How much time you come, I mean, how many times you come to the church? It doesn't matter. If you keep sins in your heart, the Lord will not hear you. And that is very clear in the Bible. So, I want to encourage all of us, if there is anything in our heart on a daily basis, just bring it to God night before you only and God, the God Please forgive me for the sins that I have committed today, knowingly and unknowingly. Sometimes you are doing it unknowingly. You do not know it. You did it, but God wants you to really acknowledge Him that uh, you have done something wrong. And He is watching you and He is seeing what is happening in your life. And then once you do that, then God will be... It's like a father and son relationship. If my son comes to me, good thing he's not here now, uh, if he comes to me, and uh, he, I, I think I mentioned this one before as well, and he said, Daddy, uh, please forgive me for, you know, not listening to you. If your daughter or your son comes to you with that attitude, you will really be happy. But how many sons and daughters are coming to mommy and daddy and with that kind of attitude? 
right? We don't say it anymore in our generation. When you, when you tell your children to uh, do something, and you, ask, you, you told them, why did you do that? They, they bring a lot of excuses, right? They say, oh no, because of this, because of uh, my sister, because of my teacher, my classmates, you know. They don't acknowledge their sins. They don't acknowledge their sins to you. But if they say, Daddy, please forgive me, what, how would be your uh, reaction to your son and daughter? Would you say, oh, no, no, you're doing it again, you know, I don't accept you. And so, no, no. For me, if my son say that, you know, I really hug him, you know, kiss him, say, oh, well done, you know. And in fact, I want to give him more, right? If I have $50, I give you $50, you know, this is nice, you know. So it's nice to really come. Father and son relationship is like this. Father and son relationship. And I've said it many times in, um, also in our house to our children. They, they need to really understand this. And not only our children, but adults also, right? So we, we really need to understand. Uh, ask God to melt our hearts. First John 1 John 1.9. 1 John 1, 9, it says, If we confess our sins, our sins, S, with S, He is faithful and just and will forgive us all our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Again, it says, If we confess, then He will, he will be faithful, just, to forgive us. But if we don't confess our sin, God will not forgive us, right? If we confess, God will forgive us. If we don't confess, God will not forgive us. Confess your sin to God. Number three, seek the Lord on a daily basis. Hosea says, the last part of Hosea, if you have it, you can put it on the screen again. It says, until he comes. Until he comes. It means he's talking about on a daily basis. Seek the Lord on a daily basis. Seeking is not a one-time act. But in God's kingdom, it is a daily routine for all citizens. Joshua 1.8 the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8, it says, Keep this book of the law always. Many times? Day and night, right? So we really need to seek the Lord every day. It's not once a week. It's not twice a week or once a month or once a year. It is every day. And God requires all of us to do that. I'm asking Lucia to... A study the book of Proverbs. And now they are getting conditioned. Even Cyrus is now getting conditioned because I'm giving them incentive. If you do that, then you can do this. If you read Proverbs, then you can play your games. Now, before they play their games, they know, they know that they have to read the Bible. After five years, I know that it's going to be uh, you know, normal for them. They don't need to wait for daddy to tell them to read the Bibles. They will read the Bible for themselves. But at first it's hard. But we have to really start it at one point. This book is a manual. This book is a manual for us. We cannot operate our lives without a manual. It's like a TV. You know, every TV you get, there is a manual inside the TV, right? But how many of us are opening that manual? Nobody. We just want to put it on the TV and plug in, and put it on the wall and plug in and then let it, uh, you know, run. But there are a lot of functions in that TV that we don't know, right? That's why they are giving manual. So if TV has a manual, in everything in life also, everything, you know, even the coffee machine, they, they gave us manual for coffee machine. To read the manual, why? Because we want to understand how that uh, thing functioning, how the TV is functioning. So that's the same thing with human being. 
If you want to know human being, how human beings are functioning, you have to get to the manual. And this is our manual. You don't need, you don't go and ask somebody else, right? If, if we have a Panasonic TV, and you don't read the manual of Panasonic TV, you don't want to go to Samsung TV or Samsung manual to read the Samsung manual in order for you to know the Panasonic TV, right? It doesn't make sense. So for us also, this is our manual and this is our authority. We really have to get into this. And the Bible is very clear, day and night. So I want to suggest something which I am doing and I have learned how to do it and somebody told me how to do it. And I think many of us don't know so I want to suggest, number one, choose a place on a daily basis. Choose your place on a daily basis. It doesn't matter where it is. You know, back in Middle East, we, we used sometimes, in one, uh, two, three years, we used to have in a studio flat, just a one room, one washroom, kitchen is inside, everything is inside, the bed, the sofa, everything is inside, just a studio flat, all right? So, you don't, you don't have a place to worship God and read your Bible, right? So for us, we have to go to the washroom. It is okay to go to the washroom to, to just meditate, to just study, you know, to whatever you want to do. But now we have a lot of place. So choose a place and choose a time. The Bible, most people in the Bible, including Jesus Christ, they started in the morning. I start in the morning. They suggest, everybody suggests to start it in the morning. Because morning when you wake up, your mind is fresh. And uh, uh, when you read something, then it will sink down in your, in your heart, in your mind. Because uh, you haven't seen anything now in the day, right? You're, you haven't seen your boss. You, you haven't seen, you know, your wife shouting at you, nothing, you know. So it's, it's time for you to seek the Lord on that moment. But I understand a lot of us are working. So if you can choose nighttime, then it is up to you. It doesn't matter as long as you choose a place and time to seek God. And if you seek God, God promised you will be what? Prosperous and successful if we do it day and night. If you are giving 10% of our income to God, why don't we give 10% of our time to God as well? Is it too much? No, it's not. I, you don't need to give, what is the 10% of 24 four hours? Okay. okay, two hours and 40 minutes, is that right? Okay, two hours, 40 minutes. Uh, I guarantee if you give 40 minutes, your life will never be the same again. You don't need to give two on 40. <laughs> not, not, not everybody will give. Even some pastors, they don't give two hours and 40 minutes. But I guarantee if you give 40 minutes of your time on a daily basis, your life will never be the same again. You will see different things in your life every day. Breakthrough comings. You know, it is amazing that uh, every year, every January, we start our day, our year with, uh, with seven days fasting. We believe it. We, we, we ask God for it because we want our year to be successful year. Uh, everything we do to be His will, not our will. So before we do the fasting every January, we write down the things that we want to accomplish and God wants us to accomplish. We write everything we, we want in life. We write it down and we fast. We bring it to God. Say, God, we want to fast for this year. We want to believe that you will go before us. And now 10 months passed, I haven't looked at those uh, things that we have uh, written. I haven't, but I knew the things that, I still remember some of the things that we wrote down, Lucille and I. Many of them has come to pass. Many of them. In fact, the, the registration of this church 
under CRA. Normally, most of the church planters, it will take uh, four to eight months because there is one process. One process is to uh, open a file in a government. They, they will give you a BN number and everything. There is another file. There is another time that you need to submit a lot of documents for church. They call it char you know, charity. The church, they call it charity. So normally, it will take four to eight months. And it was very amazing. It took us one month and 15 days. Remember you signed one paper? We sent it back. And one month and 15 days, we received a result. And it's a congratulations. Now you are a fully operated registered charity. And then when we send it to uh, PayOC, we are under PayOC. And then the, the, the lady in PayOC said, this is miracle. This is one time, one in a blue moon, once in a blue moon that's happening like this. Why? Because we write down the things we wanted in the first year of our lives in 2015, in January. We fasted, we prayed, and said, God, we need this one. We need that. Go for us. Go before us. And God has done it. This is one thing only. But there, there are a lot of other things that we wrote down, and God has really amazingly brought it to pass for us. Because we, we, we started to seek the Lord. So I want to encourage all of us to seek the Lord. Okay? And lastly, number four, seek Him with all your heart. Seek Him with all your heart. Jeremiah 21, 29, verse 13. It says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Deuteronomy 4, 29. It says, but if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. The word seek in Hebrew is called bakash. You don't need to learn it. It means to search out. How do we search out God? Is it by our own ways? By our own standard? The standard of this word? By our own tradition we search God? No. Jesus summarized all the commandments in two commandments. You can find it in Matthew 22, verse 20, 36. It said, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So what's the first and greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God. And the second is it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang out in these two commandments. So in the Old Testament, we had ten commandments. And from the ten commandments, we have almost uh, 300 plus commandments. So it was very hard for Old Testament people to keep all these commandments. But Jesus made it very easy for us. Is it not easy? Is it easy or not? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, and love your neighbor. Is it easy to love our neighbor? Okay, who is the neighbor? In Hebrew, neighbor means the one beside you. Okay? Who is the one beside you? Number one is your spouse, if you are married. If, if you are a daughter, of, if you are a child, it's your brother, your sister. If you are in the school, it's your classmate in the school, your neighbor, the one close to you is your neighbor. If you are living in a condominium, the, the one near beside you, the, the one beside you, the house beside you is your neighbor. So God wants us to love our neighbors, right? Why? Because of the principle of sowing and reaping. Okay? Sowing and reaping. Sow righteousness and the Bible says you will reap the fruit of unfailing love. 
Amen? So I want to encourage all of us to do that. And the, the, the closer you come to God, the closer He gets to you. That's my message for all of you today. The closer to, you come to God, the closer He will come to you. I want to close with this. Uh, you can come. I want to close with this. Uh, Moses, during the time that he led the children of Israelites from Egypt to the, to the promised land, he really tried to give the message of God to them. They were rebellious. They did not listen. And God sent them, after Moses, he sent them also a lot of prophets. They did not listen. But during that time, Moses went up to the mountain to seek the Lord. And then when he came back after 40 days, his face was shining that he has to put a, a veil in front of his face so people will not see uh, his shining face. God wants us to seek him in a way that people we recognize us that we are seeking the Lord. We see us that, oh, you are different. Oh, Gerard, you are different. Why are you acting this way? You know, uh, I love the way you act. I love the way you talk. I love the way you speak to people. So in summary, let's just be like Joseph. Let's just be like Moses. And let's just be like Jesus Christ. That he said, even though the Bible says, even though he was divine, he did not, he did not consider himself uh, equal to, to God, really, to be divine. But he, he, he lowered himself down to be a servant to us by dying on the cross for us. So let's just uh, really focus on this and then seek the Lord on a daily basis. Focus on God. And I believe all of us, our life will never be the same again. Amen? Amen. You got something? Amen? God bless you. Okay, let's just pray. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, we are so very thankful for the Bible, for your words in the Bible. That, Lord, we, when we start reading this manual that you have given us, God, we start understanding your plan, your purpose for our lives, for our children. God, we want to thank you that uh, you, you are a forgiving God, that even though we have done mistakes, sins in our lives, you will still accept us. You are a God of second chances. And when we come to you, your word says you will come close to us. Father, I pray that each and every one of us will learn how to seek the Lord. How to seek you, God. How to come close to you. We give you honor and praise and glory, Jesus. You are the King of kings, Lord of lords, came to this earth. To teach us how to live in this broken generation. I pray for your children that they will, they will not give up, God. They will not give up on their marriage. They will not give up on their study. Lord, a lot of things are hard to earn, hard to study. But I pray that none of us will give up, God. Especially on you, God. We will never give up. We will never compromise. Father, bless your children. Bless us as we uh, go to our places. And let your name be glorified every day in our lives. And we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen and Amen.